Hey everyone, welcome into the garage and as you can see we have a new toy to play with, a new tool to use. It is from Mr. Hobby, the Procom Boy LWA Trigger Type, double action, 0.5 millimeter gravity fed airbrush. Now this is not going to be a new product, it has been on the market for at least a few years now. I just became aware of it a few months prior and now it became a Christmas gift from the wife. And here we are today talking about it. There are a lot of uh, YouTube videos out there covering this airbrush and its sister version, the 0.3 millimeter, that you can watch and you'll probably learn something as, uh, from those videos as well. Like I said, this has a three point, this has a three millimeter version as well, along with the five millimeter that I purchased. This also has your choice of two different spray patterns. It has a, or the typical spot spray pattern, and it has a wide angle spray pattern to help you get to help you paint larger items larger you know like bodies and just larger pieces and that brings us to the reason why I wanted to try this airbrush out when I in my mind I was thinking maybe this will work better for uh, doing the 2k clear coats my Iwata eclipses can do them just fine they handle them pretty good but I was thinking maybe this might just work just a little bit better, more so with that wide angle nozzle on it. And will I be able to do a better job and will it make it just make it easier and quicker? So that I wanted to give it a try. I'm wondering though if I should have gone with the three millimeter version instead. Uh, a five millimeter goes through a lot. I mean it does use it uses a lot of uh, paint. Clear it'll go through it really quickly. So I'm wondering based on my experience using my uh, Eclipse 0.3, uh, 0.35 and 0.5. The difference between them, I'm still wondering if I should have maybe just gone with the 0.3. But we'll find out. I haven't used it yet, so we'll see how it goes. Other thing that I'm learning, slowly learning about this airbrush, is that it may not actually be built, manufactured by Mr. Hobby, or nor the uh, uh, Iwatas. What I'm learning is that it's a manufacturing company that it makes these airbrushes for these companies and they all put their names on it. So basically you're getting the same product just with the different company name. Which explains some similarities between the different airbrushes that I'm noticing and that some accessories that you can buy for your Iwata airbrushes will fit the Mr. Hobby airbrushes perfectly, like they were made for it. Uh, there is a grip that you can get for your, I think it's uh, Eclipse, that will fit this airbrush just perfectly. Again, I can't say that's a factual piece of information just yet. I'm still doing some research on it. So we'll see where that leads. It doesn't really, really matter, I guess, in the long run. As long as it works, I guess that's what matters. The other reason why I picked this up is I wanted to try out the trigger function. I hear from a lot of guys that have switched over to using a trigger style airbrush that they will never go back and it is the best thing ever. So I kind of wanted to give it a try. And some of the airbrushes that these guys have used that I wanted to try were expensive. I'm talking like a $300 and up airbrush. And I kind of didn't really want to spend that much money for the air, for, on an airbrush. Not that it's not a not not that it's bad. Three hundred dollars isn't bad. It's just I kind of that was a lot of money to spend for something that I may not like using the trigger style. So this also handles that well. It covers that part as well as I'll have the trigger style to try out. And this airbrush only runs right about a hundred and just a little north of a hundred dollars. I think it was one hundred and thirteen dollars on Amazon. So it's really truly not that expensive. It's cheaper than the eclipses that I got. Well, it's cheaper than the Eclipses if you buy them from the U.S. at 140 to 160 or up dollars. I bought my Eclipses direct from Japan, so I paid less than 100 dollars for them for it. So it's a good deal, I think, right around 113 dollars. So let's uh, quit talking about it and unbox it so we can talk about it some more, shall we? Let's get the box open. Get the slide out. Some more. Come on. All right. Here, a couple of uh, documentations. There. 
Let's look at the. Uh, you can see it looks really nice, nice and shiny. One thing I want to mention is how much it weighs. It, it, the whole thing right now weighs at least a couple of pounds. There is some weight behind this airbrush. Bring it out, and again, this thing has some weight to it. It feels really good. It feels really, really solid in the hand. I'm gonna drop it again. The thing probably it probably weighs a good pound. I'm guessing right or, or close to it. It has some serious weight. I'm gonna have to put on the scale to see how much it actually weighs because I'm kind of curious. But there is again, there is some weight to it. One cool thing about this airbrush is, if you'll notice right now, it has a very small uh, fitting for a hose. This is going to be if you were in Japan and you wanted to use Mr. Hobby's compressed air out of a can. And so what you would do is you would take this piece out right here. You would screw this on to the top of the can. And then you would connect this hose. And then, and then I'll, I would allow you to use the can of air. But we're not in Japan. We're not going to be using Mr. Hobby's compressed air. We're going to use a compressor. So I'm going to unscrew this down here. Take this off. And now I can attach it to my 1 8 MPT hose. On the airbrush out of the box is the wide angle nozzle there. I can't really tell if it's in focus. That is the wide angle nozzle. And down here and is the uh, spot nozzle. It's real easy to switch these out. You just screw this big piece right here. Take it off. Don't let it. Okay. Piece. And boom. Now you have a normal spot pattern nozzle on the airbrush. Real easy to switch out. Let's get the cup on there. They have it ready to go. Here we are at the paint booth. Get ready to give this airbrush a try and see how it does and see the difference between the spot nozzle and the wide angle nozzle. I got it all hooked up, ready to go. And we're going to start with the uh, spot nozzle. One thing I want to mention before we go and get started right now, when you pull the uh, trigger back, it's only allowing the air to come through. The double action part of this airbrush is you to you turn this knob back here, and the more you turn it, it'll be counterclockwise. The further the trigger is going to come back, is going to be allowed to come back, bringing out the paint flow. The, the further the trigger is allowed to go back, the more paint you're going to use. So that comes into the I guess the double action part there. So we're not going to pull all the way back. I don't want to waste all the paint. This is not the first take. So we'll kick on the paint booth. So there is the spot. We'll switch it up. We get the wide angle nozzle on. Very easy to switch these out, very quickly to switch these out. And now we have the wide angle nozzle on. Let's give that a try. There you can see. There you can see how much of a wide angle it really is. Obviously, there's a lot more. There's not a lot of paint flowing through it, so it's going to take a little bit more to give you a really good idea. There you can see. Kind of. One thing I want to mention too, with the uh, wide angle nozzle. If you have when this is when these two pieces part of the nozzle are vertical, your spray paddle your spray pattern will be horizontal. When these are horizontal, your spray pattern will be vertical. Kind of interesting. 
little bit, little tidbit there for you. So again, I think that covers that. All, so that gives you an idea of how the spray patterns are going to look, how they might benefit you and your painting needs. So with that, and I'm going to stop wasting really good paint for this display. I should have used something else in the good metalizer stuff. So with that, we're going to call it. We're done. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.